What's up guys, this is FJ again, and I am on a roll today. This is my, I guess, my fifth video that I'm recording today. I'm really happy that I'm getting through all this content finally. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, FJ, how do you film yourself with a selfie stick? How do you, how are you able to record yourself? So I guess there's not too many videos out there right now with tips on how to record yourself with a selfie stick. So here it is, here's one of them. Um, this is the Wearaway selfie stick that I use now. You can really use any selfie stick with a screw mount at the end. You just need the GoPro tripod mount to screw on to the end of your selfie stick. I like this one better because it's nice and rigid. I guess I'm just going to go over some of the basics when you're recording yourself. This really helps too because of my photography background. So most of these cameras that you will be recording yourself with are ultra wide angle. So you don't really run the risk of just really focusing on something too close to yourself unless you hold the camera really close to you. Having an ultra wide angle lens also is better to make things look more stable as you're riding because each little bit of shaking in your hand or in your body isn't really going to resonate so much in the image itself. So the wider the angle is on your camera, overall I think the better the video quality would be, even like stability and just the way it looks. So some tips, you generally want to have your lens pointing to your middle, to the center of yourself. If you are recording yourself, uh, don't try to point that lens at let's say your face or if you bring it too much far down like you're shooting your knees because again, it's an ultra wide angle lens but you want to keep yourself in the center of the frame. So generally when I'm shooting myself, I do always want to look at the center of the lens and I want to imagine that there's a line sticking out from that lens and it's pointing directly to me, my center. So like maybe my chest or my stomach. Uh, that way I know that there's ample space around my body in the recording so that you can still gauge the environment and can see the background behind me while I'm riding. The further away you put your camera, the more of your background that you're gonna get, obviously. Um, so generally when I record myself, I do use my arm to further extend the perspective so that I can get even more background and things from behind me. I generally do like to record with the camera as far away from me as possible. That's why I do prefer selfie sticks with extra length. Um, I wish this extended a bit longer too, maybe like an additional foot. The only issue you have with the further your camera gets away from you is the heavier it ends up feeling on your wrist. So it gets really tricky to start recording yourself with a really long selfie stick. Also, if you go through glades or if you're gonna go through some tree runs, you definitely have to be careful with having a stick fully extended because you could swing around and really hit all the trees around you and you could do some damage to the stick, your camera, or your environment. So generally, if I'm gonna be doing tight runs with very narrow passageways, like through trees, I would bring in the stick so it's closer to me. My clearance is a smaller radius. I don't have to worry about hitting as much stuff. In terms of how you control your camera, for different videos, I actually have different perspectives. So you'll notice sometimes I have the camera on the bottom. So when I'm doing gear reviews or when I you know, wanna focus on how my snowboard reacts to the snow, I'd rather have the camera pointing to my feet. With the line sticking out of the lens, I'll have that pointed at my snowboard so that you can actually focus more on how the relationship is between the snow and my snowboard edges. But if I'm, let's say I go on a trip and I really wanna take in the scenery when I went to Austria and I was recording myself as I went down that slope, I generally had the camera on the top because that way you get my top half. It's really not a gear review, so you don't really need to see all the details of my snowboard, but you get to you know appreciate all the background and all the environment and all the ridiculous scenery of the Alps, of the Austrian Alps behind me. So that's why I, re I would record with the camera on top. As I mentioned in my other video regarding selfie sticks, you want a more rigid selfie stick if you're gonna record with the camera up top. Because the weight of the camera on this kind of selfie stick where the extensions are really based on friction and they rotate along each section. The weight of the camera as you're riding and you're going through bumps ends up rotating to the bottom and sometimes you won't even know if it's behind you. And you'll also notice too guys that there's different places you can hold while you're riding. So imagine if I was going in your direction. Um, you've seen me record myself in this direction so you can see my posture. Uh, that's more so when I'm trying to film technique how I am positioning my body, you can see 
how much I bend my knees and things like that, my, my arm placements and my shoulder placements when I'm turning, that's when you see me hold the camera in front of my chest as opposed to in front of me. Uh, when I first started out, if you're just starting to record yourself, the easiest place to actually hold your camera is in front of you because that is where you're facing. So you, you don't run the risk of losing track of where you're holding your camera because it's always in your face because that's the same direction you're going. It's actually easier too because the weight of the camera is in front of you. You don't have to work as hard to counterbalance that additional weight. It sort of adds this just further momentum to guide yourself while you're riding forward. A lot of my older videos were filmed that way because it was just easier and safer to do. I always had the camera within my frame of vision, so I never was afraid of hitting anybody with it if I was riding around with a lot of other riders. But the downside to just always recording yourself from the front is you only get that one perspective. You get your front view, and chances are, because of where your camera is pointing, you're going to get a lot of the sky because you're going downhill. You're not really getting a lot of the you know, the beautiful scenery behind you, you're just gonna get a lot of the slope or the sky. Um, you don't get to see the, the background behind the slope or around the slope. So the more favorable position to hold your camera or to hold your selfie stick is behind you while you're riding. You know, you have to be really mindful of your wrist position so that once you imagine that imaginary line sticking out of the lens pointing at you, that you keep that same position on your, on your wrist. Because over time, if you're riding and then you get lazy and then you start lowering your wrist like this or you just forget and you start raising your wrist like this, you're not going to be recording yourself. You're going to be recording more of the ground like this or you're going to be recording more of the sky. So you've got to keep your forearm with your hand pretty stable so that when you're recording yourself, you're always getting the same field of view and uh, perspective while you're recording yourself. The benefit of this too is you see everything that you are about to encounter while you're riding. So it's more of an interactive experience for your audience. Uh, they get to sort of witness the ride with you. When it was in front of you, you are the subject of that frame. Uh, whereas when it's, the camera's behind you, you're giving your audience a lot more to look at. You're looking at you know, your direction. You're also looking at your body, your posture, um, mainly in the center of the frame but you also get a sense of direction because they'll see where you're heading, they'll see the kind of obstacles that you're gonna hit. Um, you know, if you're about to hit the jump, they'll also, you know, build up with that kind of uh, excitement too. And also, of course, as you go downhill, you see more of the surrounding area, so more of the mountains, more of the, you know, the small city below. All the beautiful things you really get to see when you're riding on top of a mountain. You get to share it with your audience as well as you're recording from behind yourself. Tricky thing is though, having your arms st stick out like this behind you, you're gonna need some counterbalance with that because it's just, you're riding in this direction and you're giving yourself sort of some additional weight and drag behind you. So sometimes you'll see me counter any kind of movement with my back hand with my front hand. So if, um, if I'm gonna bring the camera up here, I need to sort of counterbalance that with my other arm. You'll see me, you know, move around accordingly, depending on where I put the camera. Um, over time, I got better and I got a little bit more stable, so eventually I didn't have to use this arm as much. I got more comfortable with just using this arm. But just general rule of thumb, you're going to need a counterbalance to maintain your center while you're riding. Um, even though I've had many, you know, I guess seasons of experience, I still fall sometimes while trying to record myself because I lose focus. Either way, I could be losing focus on where I'm riding in my terrain because I'm thinking too much about what kind of perspective I want to film and then all of a sudden I'm going pretty fast, I'll catch an edge and I'll fall. Uh, that happened to me in Killington actually while I was trying to record my friend. Um, it was pretty It was pretty bad. I was going pretty fast and I ended up tumbling a little bit. I guess that's a really good way to segue into filming others. So you know, film selfie stick is great for filming you, you're the center of attention, it's awesome. Uh, most of my videos are like that, but sometimes you're gonna want to film other people too. So here are some recommendations for that. Um, generally, I do like when the camera's on the bottom, and again, you just have to edit the video afterward in post in order to flip it right side up. But having the camera on the bottom allows you to get lower to the ground in your camera shot angle. And what that does is the, the closer you bring your camera to the ground while you're riding and you're filming someone else, 
the faster that person's gonna look, you're able to actually show more speed in your videos. It looks more impressive, it looks, you know, it looks more dangerous. That's what I like about low angle shots when you're filming other people. Um, you're able to get, you know, more of the spray. Only thing you have to look out for though is you don't want the camera to hit the snow while you're riding. That's happened to me a lot. Um, it's, it's bound to happen to anyone, but you just have to be mindful of that. Make sure, you know, you keep this, the camera above the surface. Sometimes you might not even know it, but the spray might end up on the camera and you think you're still filming, but you know, that snow spray could be covering up your lens already, maybe even condensed and froze again. And you're basically not recording anything at that point. It's just garbage. So yeah, you do have to keep in mind the cleanliness of your lens surface. You can also film on the top too, if you still want to show more of the background and the area around the rider that you're filming or the skier that you're filming. Um, one last thing I want to mention, I know this is, video is getting a little bit long, is the back of the GoPro for your audio. I used to film all my videos with the waterproof casing because I thought, you know, well, snow is just frozen water and then if it gets in there, then it's gonna melt and it's gonna damage the camera. But if you are careful and you just keep that camera housing away from the snow, you should be okay. Even if there's some snow that gets in there, you just wipe it off. You know, you just don't want to have any kind of the condensation or the drops of water to go into your camera. But if it's just around the camera on the case, you know, take it out, wipe it down with something. Make sure it's dry in your housing all the time because if there's any kind of moisture in there, it's going to fog up and freeze and you're going to ruin your, your shot and you're just not going to be able to capture. So I use now the open back. The audio is way better. You don't need another audio recorder while you're recording. It picks up pretty good sounds of scraping on the snow if you're shredding on the snow or carving. Um, the wind itself isn't too much of an issue with the back. I remember that when I used to record with the waterproof housing, I would always have to use pure music overlay on the video afterward because the, the audio was just not interesting to listen to. But if you leave it open, it's got a little bit more audio pickup. It sounds a little bit more realistic in your videos. And again, guys, when you're filming others, you have to be careful and make sure that you're still focused on your writing as well. Like I mentioned before, when I was filming my friend, I was too focused on where my friend was to make sure that I kept pointing that imaginary line at my friend that I totally lost control of my snowboard and I fell. That's useless for the video and it's really bad for you. So you want to make sure that you're always balanced, you're, you're still focused on your writing. This is just an added element of difficulty when you're starting to film others, especially snowboarding. If you're skiing, as you see in most of the, you know, X Games and snow related sports casts and sports shows, you'll see that most of the camera people, if not all of them, are on skis. It's just easier to keep for them to keep stable with their wider stance on their skis and then they can have the camera in between close to their body when they're filming other people. Um, having a sideways stance is pretty unnatural when you're trying to shoot someone because when you use a camera you're generally facing that person. Common sense it was, will have you square up to your subject when you're shooting but you're sideways on a snowboard it doesn't really fully make sense if you're following someone and you're recording them. And also too, if you're trying to record your friend from the side, and then if you're trying to go faster than your friends so that you can record them from the front, you now have to pay attention to where your friend is to keep the camera pointed at them. You also have to maintain faster speed than your friend. And if there's any kind of turns, you have to sort of anticipate where they'll be with your camera. At the same time, you have to watch out for your obstacles and other people. You don't want to you know, run into and you don't want to collide with other riders or trees or anything like that. So definitely the most difficult to do on a snowboard is to record someone else from the from their front. That's that's really hard to do. Um, second hardest is probably from the side because it's just unnatural for you to have all that extra weight in front of you while you're riding and this is your cent uh, center of gravity, center of balance. And of course, always the easiest is in front of you. All right guys, I know that was a bit of a lengthy video. Hopefully you found it helpful with all my tips. Uh, if you need any examples, just look at my other videos. I have tons of them. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask uh, in the comments below. And again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can see all my YouTube channels up top. Also follow me on my social media via all the information at the bottom. All right guys, thank you. I'm done for the night. That's my last video. Yeah. See ya.